，啊，职业已经打了很多年了。如果想说放弃的话，可能就刚刚开始的那段时间会有这样一个念头吧。现在的话，因为我自己的状态还行吧，然后还是会坚持的打下去。There you go, Siang's thoughts on retirement. Something that came to mind when he was first started playing, but now he's, you know, put that in the back of his mind, no longer thinking about things. He's a very stable player. And it's a thought that a lot of players have to go through eventually. Yeah, he's a veteran player, of course, of the lineup. He's been with them for a long time and in every position. Well, not every position, but he's been with the mid lane as the Syndra player. He was playing Morgana in the support position, finds himself top lane, and he's so flexible, so malleable. It seems like, of course, that veteranship, the reason why he's there for so long is because he's damn good at his job. Yeah, and we did hear some whispers of him moving into a coaching position at the start of the split this year, but we're glad that it didn't happen and he's now back on the rift. I really feel like he's a huge part of the stability in terms of what OMG likes to do. In the previous split, we see him on Jarvan a lot of times. That utility, that engage, those fearlessness as a leader has really stepped OMG's game up. Well, we saw in that last match that he still had his fancy shoes on, was able to keep up with the rest of the young blood running around the rift and did very well for his team in that match. Just a quick re recap, gentlemen, or just your final thoughts, so to speak, on that last game before we start breaking down what needs to change going to game number two. Yeah, talking about young blood, I thought that the bottom side for OMG, even though it's kind of like unsung heroes a little bit, we're playing incredibly well. We didn't get to see too much of them in the last series going up against WE, but now that we finally got a little bit more of a grasp on them, it feels like five and Chelly are really starting to pick it up. So. And for me, I feel like FBX should go into more laning compositions. I feel like you want to enable Pepper to invade everywhere else on the map, but they had a couple uh, losing lanes in the top and in the bot lane. Let's enable Pepper to do more things, get more pushing lanes on the rift. So how exactly are Fun Plus Phoenix going to be able to do that, Clement? How do they enable Pepper to be a bit stronger on the rift? Well, I feel like they could possibly take the, the one composition they need to take away is this bot lane plus gangplank composition where they have a lot of burst damage coming in the early game. I feel like they need to avoid that. They're, if they're picking scaling compositions, it's a huge risk to even push your lane out at that point. So if they can change that matchup, maybe the gangplank, maybe the Callista, then they can have a better bot lane. And honestly, Bing needs to do a better job of backing him up when he goes into the jungle. There are a few times where he just got caught up mid. When it was just a 2v1 and when it was no re that, there was no reason for that. He had a better pushing mid laner, but somehow Bing was not there for the Graves in those situations. So I think that's one thing to really watch out for, have better vision control. Bing should be able to provide the control wards on that side of the lane if Graves is walking in that direction. So I mean, to be fair to them, this is them coming in the first season together. Uh, and they have a lot more to learn, of course, in terms of co uh, in-team cohesion. And is this something that we have to see from Bing? You know, does he have to change his own play style? Is this a matchup dependent for him in the mid lane? It's the communication thing for the, both of them, honestly. It doesn't matter what matchup it is, just be able to communicate with your jungler. Well, final thoughts, Clement, before we go into this next match. I really want to see Icon pull out some of these hardy hitting champions, you know, some of these assassins that he's known for. He was a huge point of distraction, I feel, for OMG because he was just distracting for SMLZ to get up to that point where he could hyper carry. But I feel like this season, as a veteran on the team, he should fill into that main role. Well, game number one was a very close affair to start off until their jungler for Fun Plus Phoenix decided to laugh in the face of danger. And that turned around and backfired as OMG picked up the win. We're going to go into game number two shortly. Let's send it over to our casters. It's Pulse and Rusty. Cheers, Fish. And fully agree with you, would like to see a big assassin in the mid lane. And to be fair, a lot of LeBlanc bans against Icon so far, so he hasn't been able to get his hands at least on that pick. But Icon, if he could shift into more of a carry role, then all power to him. I mean, he was known as an Ari player. He's a very good Zed player. These are all possibilities, but I'm going to say they're closer to Pipe Dreams in the current state of the mid lane meta. Icon still had a fantastic Vladimir showing, so no matter what he plays, all I want to see is a performance that's at least up to par of what we saw in game number one. Mm -hmm. The consistency to me is the biggest thing. They looked like a very good mid-jungle duo for OMG yep. between World 6 and Icon. I just hope that remains. But then you look at the other side, and honestly, I just have to echo the analyst desk. I thought it was communication problems. Mid lane had priority. Mid lane had the push, had the ability to rotate. But the fact that he didn't just raises questions. Was it that he didn't rotate or was it that he didn't ward? Was it not mm -hmm. just that he told the jungler to be careful and he would have been more careful? Pepper clearly had no idea every single time he died. 
And it was very much the case. And it was just over and over and over again. Because if it was once and maybe twice, and it was like, okay, sure. But it was like constantly it was happening in the river. And it even sparked multiple fights down there as well near Dragon Pit. But we are getting to the second game. We'll see if FPX can bounce back against OMG, who are starting to play more on form and more what we're used to, to seeing from them. So they will ban out the Cogmore, the Tam Kench from OMG. And on the opposite side, Callista and Alistair from FPX. The must ban from FPX is usually going to be the Cogmore LWX. If you don't know him, plays Cogmore and will probably play Twitch. Mm -hmm. If both are not available, then he may go to another type of carry. Last game, they early rotated the Ezreal, however, felt like as a denial. But yeah. then the Callista bopped them. So now you've got a Callista in the ban list. We we'll have to see what the AD carry priority becomes for FPX. And the where is the priority as well for OMG, right? Because Sejani was also banned against World 6, and that was an instant first pick from them, just allowing them that uh, ability to engage and also catch out Pepper as the game progressed. But Rise will actually be the pickup now for Icon. I like this contrast from OMG. It, it may not be a priority. For, yeah, that's a Zoe well, hello. It may not be a priority for uh, OMG to have the Rise, but to take it from Bing seems to be the yep. number one in priority. And now FPX deliberating between good or broken <laughs> yeah i mean zoe is very strong sometimes a little bit gimmicky but okay they'll lock in the azir in the end but i feel like man if zoe's open and you're against a stronger team why not just pick and give yourself the chance that zoe might just pop off i don't disagree <laughs> <laughs> i think that zoe is exceptionally strong and when she is winning she is the devil but there are ways to beat her, and Ryze is actually one of the traditional answers to it. At least in solo queue, from what I've been seeing, if a Ryze runs unsealed spellbook and starts with cleanse, you can't kill the Ryze. In fact, the Ryze has a higher chance to kill you pretty much at all times. And if he can survive laning phase, he gets an abyssal mask, you're pretty much done. Could be the possibilities there, so it just goes to a standardized pick of Azir. And we've got Lee Sin for the jungle as well for Pepper. So if he wants to get into the enemy jungle for World 6 or of World 6, he will be able to do so. Varus down to Chelly, and most likely a support pickup here as well for OMG. Actually getting priority on Braum, it looks like. Yeah, they may want a jungler instead just so that it doesn't get banned, but we'll have to see if they do prioritize the support or if they change their mind. So now they haven't changed their mind. The jungle role is something that FPX can look towards actively banning. Same thing applies here if the logic is there for FPX. Do they want to pick an AD carrier or a support? Because they can only pick one. The rest gets banned. I'd pick a support. Yes, indeed. But FPX, we'll see what they'll give us. They already picked up the mid laner as well, so they're probably going to leave top lane as a counter pick on red side here for FPX. So I wouldn't be surprised if they do that. And it would make sense to lock in a support, but it's actually Janna. So even though there were tank supports still left available for them, they'll lock in Janna. Last second swap to that Janna with no AD carries available. It makes you wonder that if this forces some funny bans from OMG, do they just freak out and say, all right, we need to get rid of Twitch and we need to get rid of Tristana. Cogmore is already gone. Mm -hmm. Those are the two outstanding hyper carries that may just stand to attention. So we'll see where OMG goes with their ban phases. Unsurprisingly from FPX, they target the place that wasn't picked in the first three of draft. <laughs> she ban away World 6's Rengar. He laughed about it too. He did. He thought that was very funny. Team, maybe. Vayne Van, ah yes. So OMG are getting ready for the possibility that LWS is going to bring out another hyper carry, which first off, hyper carry player. Second, they've locked in the Janna. So probably going to be one of those. With the Vayne gone though, there's still two hyper carries that I mentioned before that are there. So. Makes you wonder. It's pretty much what you don't want to play against within that pool at he this point. He has played Tristana, so that might be the second ban for them, but that does leave open Twitch. And Twitch is just generally a stronger hyper carry if we're going to go yeah. by the definition. So I think it might be a Twitch ban and just sacrifice that they can have a Tristana if they want. Might be the case. Rex signed the ban against World 6 here. Lots of respect towards the jungler. And I as you, as you said, do expect a support, uh, AD carry pick to follow up here. And Caitlyn, actually. Okay. Not a big pick for LWX, but not seen so much in the current meta. So they've completely separated themselves from all of the traditional hyper carries, and they're not sure where LWX is going to go, but it's more so acknowledgement that he's going he's gonna to get one. We can't yeah. ban them all right now, so we're just going to pick and ban away things that we don't want to deal with and have a better time as the end result for that. Also, with the two jungle bans from FPX, it does feel like the last four bans we've seen have been like, Halfway meta, Rengar and Rek'Sai, like, they're good. World 6 plays them, but if World 6 plays Kha'Zix, then he's just going to pick the meta version of what was banned anyway. Yeah. They're good, but not the best. Though, Tristana locked in here, as you we were saying, probably the most likely option past those two, maybe 
we see something like a Twitch as well, but it's going to be Tristana, which is uh, a little safe in that lane as well. And just in general. You probably round out this composition with a Gangplank and a Kha'Zix if you want to assassinate top laners, but mm -hmm. there are other options there. Again, Xiang mm -hmm. is a super good Gangplank, but he also is a tank player primarily. He is, but with Gangplank being available, I guess it's just because they're scared of what Gimmick could bring out at this point. Because has it been a Camille ban? No. There's still a lot of bruises in the top side that could do very well into the Gangplank pick. Uh, but Orn is going to be the pickup here. And a Kha'Zix for the jungle as well. World 6 will get his hands on that one. So something that could at least combat the Lee Sin in the early game. And not somewhat. knowing who's going to be the counter pick, I think you're right, Pulse, is the scariest feature for OMG. They don't want to pick the Gangplank blind. They know there's things like Urgot running around. <coughs> Lowey, you're currently in an Orn situation. You're looking at top lane. Yes, you could be boring and go Gangplank and farm it out with Kleptomancy, but now is the perfect situation to pick Lowey. God damn it. <laughs> it's going to be Gangplank. You're never going to get it if you call it. You're, you're I'm never going to get it anyway. <laughs> Every time Lowey's in the meta, I never get to cast it. But. That's actually true. There's a curse that transcends region for yep. you, Pulse. It's actually terrible. In EU, now in China, the worst. But Gangplank in the top lane is not actually just swapping up the matchup. So Game Goon will pick that one up. They'll be onto World 6 as well to try and exploit the matchup and stop him from us from farming. Because as Raz was saying, he is just a ticking time bomb who does well in lane yep. and specifically this lane. You know, you saw Gangplank usually have a pretty rough time as the lane starts. Xiang would be able to push Gimgun in this case in towards the tower. The question is, does World 6 find an opportunity to kill Gimgun, or does the opposite happen where Pepper comes up top lane and makes the difference against the Orn? Last time the junglers faced each other, they actually only met each other, and the mid laners was the place of intervention. And so if top lane stays as it was in the first game, well, then you're looking at Gimgu and saying, that's a good decision. Pick that Gangplank. Do it 100 times over if they're never going to touch you. It is very much reliant on the jungle as well. You're absolutely right, because Gangplank was able to get involved in this. Gomez is using his ultimate, whereas the Orn was just kind of chilling there. But this time, it will be on Pepper to actually succeed in the jungle. And that will be on the mid lane as well. So it's going to be very much topside focused here seeing how this early game goes for them, because unlike a game like Billy Billy Gaming and you've got WE, stuff is going to happen in the first 10 minutes of the game, and in fact, those 10 minutes are very valuable for both teams. And we mentioned top lane, we say that's important, that is absolutely true, simply because of the Gangplank, but when you look towards the rest of the map, I mean, it's a Tristana Janna in the bottom lane, so there is a very real-world possibility where Pepper just goes bottom instead. It's not easy to gank for, but a Tristana getting out of a laning phase against a Braum Varus well off is a very positive situation for FPX as a roster. Same thing applies with mid lane. You get an Azir rolling against a Ryze, then there's really no risk of him dying. I mean, that's it really. We have a lot of scaling on the side of FPX. And on the opposite side as well, the Ryze is going to get in there. But getting into the second game here. We'd like to see a game three, honestly, between FPX and OMG. It's not like they get to play each other every day. Yeah, what I would like to see at the very least is FPX playing at their best. Yeah, that's true. And we may need a few weeks, to be fair, for that, because from Plus Phoenix, a very new team, very new team to playing together. Not necessarily the stage, because we've seen Game Gumi, in fact, we've seen already all these plays, apart from being played on the Rift here in the LPL, but uh, together, that's something I've got some bad news. What's that? Bing has ruined it. What's he done? Take a look at the items. And Why you'll notice you <laughs> that there so is a single one missing for a stopwatch. One Out of everybody stopwatch. else in the game. Everyone else He's has a stopwatch. Because they've had the game. 10 out of 10 stopwatches. It better be worth it that he's going for, whatever it is. I'd imagine he's still in a very similar tree. Uh, sorry, Azir, I should say, always goes precision secondary, so I shouldn't say that. That's the reason that he doesn't have it. Bummer. Comet is his keystone, you can see that next to his name, so that well, does mean he has to be precision as a yeah. secondary. Needs that alacrity, and potentially the presence of mind once again with that. Absolutely fine, I guess, but maybe alternatively he could have picked something else. Something that could have picked up the stopwatch, but well, Six is going to get the red buff on the bottom side. Uh, actually, move on to his Raptors now, so a bit of a delayed start here for Chelly and Five, and we'll get the push advantage over to LWX and Chris, which obviously just going to be a very good thing for these two players. It was a start on the top side there for Gimgun and Pepper. Yeah, LWX and Chris, while they're on your screen, have committed to the overheal build for Tristana and Janna. It's a barrier on Trist and a heal on Janna. Makes a whole lot of sense. I'm going to try and ramp up and be hypey carries, and if anyone's going to do that, it is LWX with Chris supporting. Whereas in the middle lane, a lot of reminiscence of the last game with the minion dematerializer mm -hmm. for Icon. 
in the middle lane, that's where World 6 comes into play. Instead of running into the other jungler, always a possibility that he comes for a gank in the middle lane. Right now, I really do think it's going to be about the junglers in this early game, World 6 and Pepper. They were finding each other early, invading. And both of these junglers are very much invade junglers. They like to get those advantages, allow the lanes to do their own thing with the advantages that they've managed to accrue. So we'll see what they do after they get their initial clears. Though both of them are going for in uh, full clears. Though World 6 now moves to the top side. Well, we actually got a brush. very early move Hello. from Icon and World 6 up to towards the top lane. There's no stopwatches active, but they are diving. Yeah, Ginku knocked up, and in comes World 6. He's next to his tower, so he has to reduce damage. But at the very least, Icon will be able to walk in and pick up first blood. And that's one way to shut down a GP. Jesus, that was early coming out of them. Icon can actually switch with the unsealed spellbook to teleport as well and get back to mid lane with a tier and then some, because he's the recipient of that first blood. That is a super strong start for OMG picking on the gangplank, making him pay for it, and sending three people up there. So it wasn't just a gank. It wasn't just forcing him to recall and teleport. It was actually killing him and giving gold to the rest of the map. And that's what I like so much from RNG just then. Yeah, and frankly, that's what we need to see from FPX as well, but we never visit the top side ever. And Pepper, get out of my jungle. Gonna follow up after World 6 as well. Doesn't have the red buff, so even if he gets some rain, I'm not sure what he's hoping to achieve. But we should have just turned back onto the Raptors at that point. But regardless, that's one way to shut down a GP is just to gank him early. And especially that's where the Orn really comes into effect because he got Orange out of the knockups and the knockbacks and everything that Orn has. So once you get CC, you're getting planted in place. He's just the best champion to gank for. You've seen Rengar Orn combos as well, where Rengar just ults through lane. Yep. But there's nowhere to dodge all of the crowd control. I know top lane is like Gangplank will have the stopwatch, but if you use the stopwatch, then the Rengar's already on top of yep. you. You still can't escape. So again, Orn, definitely a place that you want to go if you can to gank for. I do love the creativity from OMG. Once again, using minion dematerializer and a cannon wave. I know I've been saying it a lot, but that gives you free roams. The timing of that roam was at the cannon wave. Oh, Pepper, he stopped his recall and is now over a ward anyways. So, Icon knows he's right there. He's actually playing towards his top side of the wave. This is very ballsy from Icon, because Bing will follow up. He doesn't have the level 6. He now has to burn his flash, but will turn around onto Pepper. He has to flash away because World 6 is here, and Icon will collect the kill. They were five steps ahead of them, and Bing is very low. Close to dropping as well, and it was all on that ward. Yeah, Bing has Flash and Cleanse still available, but he is going to have to go back to base. Pepper is dead. World 6, every step you take, he is watching you. And Pepper just cannot get it done like that. Even though Icon looked like he was out of position bottom. That's yeah. a big commit. There's a lot of damage onto LWX as well, but this keeps happening. You know, Pepper being unable to get the synergy together, and it's constantly being exploited by World 6 and Icon, and this has turned into another early game advantage for OMG. We're getting to a situation that could be almost identical to game one. Just shows you how capable the 2v2 duo is from this roster yeah. of OMG. Bottom lane, I know I cut myself off before. I was very confused as to why they were fighting. I was more confused as to why five flashed forwards just to get a stun off. Wasn't really a kill threat. Again, all four summoners are there from the bottom lane of FPX. So that felt like a very big disconnect from OMG's 2v2 in contrast to what's been happening in the mid jungle. True. I guess they felt pressured to do something because the rest of the map is winning. So we have to win as well. But frankly, you don't necessarily need to. We have a first back, so as well, Bryze gone for the uh, mana build as per usual. Mid lane, got some of those daggers, and the stopwatches at six minutes have just turned online, so those ganks will be a little bit harder to do, apart from being because he's the only one out. He's the only guy who didn't take that one. Mm -hmm. Bing is still the Azir, so once he ticks over to six, still very difficult to kill nonetheless. And he's against a Ryze and a Kha'Zix who have a lot of burst, so if he can cleanse out of the rune prison from Icon, then yep. he should generally be able to survive it. Cleanse is the most important part of that, I think. 100%. Gimu gonna get a bit of free farm here. Got this wave crashing, but he's still about a wave behind Xiang as he goes not back to base. He sticks around. He's starting to run out of mana, though. Look only how strong Icon one is. One time that Orn wants to go back. Even the Raptors are gonna help out a little bit here as Bing tries to escape. Icon 2 0. He's got the catalyst. He's got his stopwatch ready at any moment, so he's super hard to gank. He's just snowballing in the middle lane so hard that I feel like. Pepper does get this red buff, but World 6 can start to intervene with all further jungle camps yeah. just because of how quickly mid lane can be a pivot point. 
Well, Icon hasn't been as flashy as he usually is. If you give him a couple kills, he will run away with it. So that's still something you have to keep in mind. Bing knocking him into the tower, but he's not taking tower aggro because he didn't attack him. Pepper into the middle of the lane. A bit of a miscommunication. Kick away. Lands the Q. Follow up onto Icon. Needs another Tempest. Auto attack should do it. But he gets the shield out. In could Chris from the bottom side. And is this a W Max Janna? Yes, it is. Chris picks up the kill. Chris will get it on the Janna. Unfortunately for everybody else on FPX, it is still the Janna that gets the gold. LWX needs to be super cool just now as well and back away he dies icon does die it took so much effort to kill him though that it almost feels like it isn't worth it <laughs> yeah almost that's a throw so much at him but in the end they will be happy with the kill it is unfortunate it went on to crisp as you mentioned would have liked it to have gotten at least on pepper if not bing yeah honestly. so i feel like whilst i said it feels like it isn't worth it i'm actually inclined to believe that if OMG can make some kind of counterplay in response to what has just happened. I feel like it's good for FPX, it buys time for the Azir, it helps them out a lot. Janna getting the gold doesn't mean all that much, it's just that they have freedom to place wards and get some vision control. But it also means that Lee Sin has no kick, Azir has no flash or ultimate. OMG could actually utilize that and get something else bigger back for themselves. Yeah. For now though, they are just transferring buffs over to the respective mid laners. That's what they're really looking to do. But it's 2 to 1 in terms of the uh, kill score and slight advantage to OMG for gold. But it's not snowballing out of control. I thought they were maybe going to do more in the top side. They got that initial gank onto Gim Goon, which is great. But this is essentially the gold difference you expect to see, anyways, in that matchup in the 1 versus 1 and it's gank plank. So give him another 10 15 minutes and he's just, just going to be gigantic, anyways. Yeah, there's two types of players on Summoner's Rift Pulse. There is the Kha'Zix and the Lee Sin's. You can see the itemization choices and how they are different as well. Kha'Zix yep. wants to kill Lee Sin. Lee Sin just wants to complete his jungle item. Mid lane, Bing. World 6 wants to kill Bing as well, and he's getting completely minion blocked. He just could not get behind that caster minion. About five seconds away from having his ultimate. It is up about now. Bottom lane also going for a fight. Yep, starting to brawl, but LWX is able to jump away. Following up now onto the Janna. She goes in, uh, she actually goes into the Zonia's effect, but Chris will have to use the ultimate there. And LWX is behind Chelly and Five. I'm unsure about this positioning right now. Good knock up there from the Howling Gale. World, World six. 6 away from the tower, and he'll finish you off. Another stopwatch, but they're camped right on top of it. He'll have to flash away. Gim Goon, another perfect timing. In comes Xiang. The round comes through, knocks up one onto Gim Goon. Gets the lockdown as well, courtesy of Brom. He goes into his stopwatch. In comes Pepper. Lands the Q, but How doesn't necessarily does want, want to go in right now. Icon! We're desperately running out of these stopwatches. Icon has actually teleported behind the fight using his ultimate. After all of that, that was so many kills going over to OMG. I've lost count of the amount of stopwatches used, but OMG is still steamrolling their way through. Bing is here and Pepper's behind. Gangplank is on the way. I think they're going to try and fight oh, this. Oh, they are very low. Another stopwatch, though, from five, because remember, a lot of those players haven't even used them yet. In comes the Azir turret. It's going to be disastrous. OMG needs to get out right now, but Chelly's locked underneath. And two kills, make that three, but from the opposite side, Xi'an will be falling to Gim Goon, and that was a massive turnaround at the cost of a tower. OMG definitely overstayed their welcome in that particular trade, but Icon does get out alive after he is the member of the team picking up all of these kills. Super crazy stuff happening through the bottom lane as the spillover effect of what was just a 2v2. One stopwatch was used. LWX, you're right, does find himself behind everyone that flashes in front of him. They want a crisp, but he gets stunned up. World 6 appears, instantly takes apart crisp. No chance to survive. The shield was actually used on LWX. Yep. Two stopwatches. The rest of the team comes in. Three Kim stopwatches. Goon, three stopwatches. Ord hits everybody. LWX is barely able to survive, but then Icon's making his way in as well. Four. <laughs> We're now Jin. That's how many <laughs> stopwatches there are. Lee Sin hits the Q and Ryze comes in. I feel like FPX, even with him dying here, very much aware that they want to continue to fight. And we don't get to see the coolest part of it, though. I think there were more stopwatches as well. There was at least <laughs> yeah. two. At least two. Because we were looking on the side of the OMG, they were the ones who were popping it. Yeah, there was two stopwatches from so, yeah. Jungle 1, AD carry. If there's nine total and six were used, there's three left. Quick max. And there's three left. Can confirm. Well, six find himself on the top side now, taking away this crap. Still an objective in the term, uh, in terms of the Rift Herald. And now both AD carries and supposed to find themselves top side as well to try and contest this one. Also the turrets. The first tower went down, so natural swap up. But we can take stock of what actually happened from all of that fight as well. Gim Goon's two one and two. The yes. gangplank is very big. Very good for the bank. But it is a five and one rise in contrast of that. It is that. 
It, it is, is a fairly large rise as far as rises go in sizings. You put him in the large column. And Gangplank will have to farm a little bit more for him to be super effective, honestly. Icon's on his way to the bot lane. He's about to shut down Gimgoon. Comes to ramp, knocks him up, and... Good luck, Gimgoon. This is, uh, is going to suck quite a lot, actually, because you're going to be corralled towards the enemy side of the map. Yeah, it's a slow process here, Pulse. But Icon will find himself another kill. Let's give him some time. There's a, <laughs> there's a lot of skill shots going uh, going alright, but in the end, it will be Xi'an getting the kill. Gimgoon's been so long dodging that he just had the wall next to him, so there yep. was nowhere else to go. He's going to go down and rise. With the play, doesn't need the jungler anymore. He's just able to help the top laners in basically the 1v1. The rest of the map still doing a lot of work for OMG and contributing as his world six in the top lane. He stepped all the way around the back because of the ultimate passive. That's, That's absolutely absurd. And LWX will fall as there is some reason a Kha'Zix behind him in that bush. That's actually so nuts. You'll never see it coming. And there is no counterplay to a Kha'Zix on top of you, but he has got the lethality. But the Varus <laughs> ultimate connected. All of these things are still yeah. put together nicely. World 6 is just a part of knocking that down with the extra damage. So kudos to Chelly for hitting that. Gangplank ultimate being used in the top side, so at least they'll keep it alive for one wave. But really, it's just going to be a battle of Gimgoon versus Icon. That's essentially what this game is going to turn into was. But Icon has such a massive lead on the Gangplank. It's going to take so long for those big hyper carries to start scaling. Because yeah, yeah. If you remember, it's LWX, you've got Bing, they're both on hyper carries themselves, but they need to scale, and it's going to take a long, long time for that to happen. What I am interested to monitor here from Icon is if he actually completes the Zonia's Hourglass earlier and tries to you know, commit to something like a teleport and kill Gimgoon a lot more often. Or if he wants to go towards completing the Seraph's Embrace and doing as much damage as he can, particularly in team fights, just because he still has the stopwatch there. So, sure. whilst he's getting up towards uh, enough money, at, I believe it's 2350 to complete his Archangels, we'll have to see which direction he chooses. Just taking a look at some of the gold turtles. So the Bank of Plank is still ahead of Xiang, just in terms of gold, only a little bit. But the mid lane is really where I'm looking. 2,000 gold advantage for Icon, just because of all the kills and the farm he's managed to pick up. Yeah, it's crested over to 7k gold at 14 minutes in the game. Usually you're pretty happy with having a Rod of Ages at about 13 minutes. So yep. to be that far ahead of the mark is a super positive sign for any rise on any team in League of Legends. As we look past that, not just the items. What are we actually looking to achieve on Summoner's Rift? What's the big objective or play? I don't feel like anyone's looking at the Drake. It's a Cloud Drake. It feels very insignificant when you compare it to the other things that they could achieve. Top lane out of turret, mid lane out of turrets are the place that I would be looking for. OMG, I probably want the mid lane out of turret the most, but to get that turret, you have to make the Azir leave lane. Or summon a Herald. Herald works. <laughs> That's definitely a possibility here. Well, the six will just drop it off to the side. And I how much health it. does mid lane up? Oh, not a lot. So, That's yep, the ticket. It's gone. It's very much gone. And now they're waiting in the brushes. Here comes the round warp onto Gimgoon. The slowdown as well coming in courtesy of the Orn. And Icon plants him in place. Another very easy kill onto the Gangplank because he just has zero support from his team here, and that's going to be a third tower on that play. Very hard to support him when it's a Rise ultimate and a max range Orn ult to apply the Brittle and slow him down in the first place. With the Brittle there, Rise just has to press W, doesn't even need to spell Flux and power it. He's stunned for longer, and that gives the optimal spell combo for a Rise. Actually a super cool combo. Yep, there's a lot of damage. Unfortunately, the Gangplank will die, and all he wants to do is farm. This seems like the last bastion of hope that's on the side of FPX is just constantly being camped at this point in time. And it's good for OMG to recognize that, you know, and constantly try and double down and exploit that. Um, and OMG are just being constantly aggressive, and this is kind of the, the cornerstone of OMG's play. They're doing aggressive, but they're, they're doing it, they're doing it smart. smart. Yeah, they have the Herald that they summon in the middle lane and say, well, I mean, we can let them kill the Herald. We're going to go towards the bottom side and find the Gangplank anyway. Or they can ignore the Herald, which will then chunk out their mid lane inner turret, and we won't ult bottom, but we disappear into the jungle, so we have the choice no matter what. OMG, are, they're making smart decisions. It's, it's honestly impressive when you consider what they were last set to this set. Yeah, definitely. Night and day difference, honestly. But FPX, so far in the wins that we've seen from them, they usually get ahead early, and then they're able to win a fight, and then they take objectives, and it's very stock standard. Problem is now we're seeing them firstly go up against a stronger opponent, and also they're not getting the advances early. They're, they're very much falling behind of OMG. Yeah. 
and they're not able to catch back up. I wonder what they would do in a scenario against a, a, a different team, more of like a middle of the pack team, with a deficit like this and where they're, they're able to come back. Because they are still looking for the opportunities, but they have a composition that's just straight up scaling. So. The other part is this point in the game for FPX. You know, they struggle to close out games. They're usually good at getting early leads. But even around now, before the Baron starts, where do they go? And how do they do it if it isn't a dive? The only yeah. times that they look fantastic is when they actually have a stopwatch. <laughs> and so they're able to snowball that early game past just the early. On top of that, Pepper's not had a fantastic time either. Seems like every move he makes is a world six or an icon there to stop him. Every he has been trapped. Yeah. In fact, he's going straight towards the Spectre's Cow because he knows the state of this game. Yeah. FPX as a yep. team acknowledge the state of this game and they're building towards three items at the bare minimum. They want that one kick lease in play. The fact that we're looking for that 17 minutes in, pretty rough showing. And honestly, Pepper just needs to go tank and do Lee Sin things. Maybe he can get a nice kick off onto a carry like Icon or Chelly. At this point, honestly, if you kick Icon into your team, he's probably just going to kill everybody because he's got two completed items. But if he can get down onto Chelly, maybe, maybe he can find a pick that would start a fight for them. Got two minutes left on the uh, on the Baron spawn. And Max Dragon's going to be the next Dragon on top of that as well for OMG. Most likely, they have complete control over the bottom side of the map. It's just about holding on with farm for FPX. That's a big old shield on the LWX when he's able to get it, but his damage isn't there. Yeah. So it doesn't matter how much protection they have. World 6. He just has so much movement speed and popping the ultimates to zone them away. He actually just looked at them for that small amount of time where he wasn't invisible and Azir yeah. ulted. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Get out. Do not want. Do not want at all. World 6 taking everything away from the jungle, so Pepper doesn't even get to farm now. And it is just a slow, painful death here for FPX unless they're able to contest something like a like a Baron or anything here, or maybe even get a pick, but OMG are playing this very well as they rotate throughout the map. Well, that's the point in the game that does make the difference, Pulse. You're right, it's the Baron when it spawns. It's, it's up in 50 seconds, so perhaps they redirect their attention towards that FPX. And that is an objective that, if nothing else, they are highly trained in dealing with. Now on the flip side, OMG, I wouldn't use the Baron as an objective you need to take. I'd actually just get vision control and use it as a team fight. They're far enough ahead that, honestly, the Baron is only cause for concern unless it's completely free. Don't make it a 50. Don't even play the percentage game on trying to outsmite yeah. the opponent. Kill FPX and then go for it. And because they're so far ahead, they can actually do that. They can establish dominance with vision after they all come back from base, I should say, and start to place it down. Because right now it's all red. Yeah, the game plan is very clear from OMG. Just play it slow, no need to make any risks. Whereas yep. FPX, they have to make risks if they want to come back into this game, otherwise it's going to be smothered out. Oh, I can't move into the top side by himself. Potential opportunity for them, as Janet has actually just gone back here, and Azir does want none of that. Doesn't even want to come remotely yep. close to Icon. Also, you know, fundamentally, stuff that people seem to forget in solo queue is if that Janna hadn't recalled because OMG started walking at her, she had no wards. Mm -hmm. She had to go back to base, refresh her sights, only get three control wards. OMG, by doing this right now, they have all of their wards placed. And if FPX fight back and start to clear vision, OMG have none left to replace. And that's where 50-50s come about is World This six. is just absolutely absurd how he's able to sell through the entire jungle. Bing gets knocked up and knocked up once more, but in comes Pepper to be his savior. Crisp around the bottom side, trying to pincer them in, but OMG back away. Hey, it didn't work. Just wait for the next ultimate. He got very caught up in being invisible, World 6. I think he tried a little bit too hard to be too flashy. I think he also tried to predict an Azir ultimate with his yeah. direction of jump there, but... Bing flashes out, Bing takes the safer out, and doesn't find himself being predicted. As Pepper is looking towards Icon. I'll be honest, if he goes up there two versus one, I'm not sure that they win, but Kim Goon in the bottom side will take the outer. Take it while you can. He is by no means oh. weak, Kim Goon. I hope he's a sprinter. Or recaller. He's ghost bladed, so he's definitely a sprinter. Oh, but it's Chelly in five. Well, block. okay. <laughs> well, he's actually trying to make it past them, but he's already used the oranges. In fact, he still has the oranges, didn't use them right there, and Gimgun will die. And good from Chelly. Not to throw the ultimate, not to double up on the crowd control, to yep. flash, make sure the Braum Sun connects, and then go for it afterwards. Icon, he's ulting towards the middle lane to hold the wave. There's no plays being made just yet. They need Chelly. And they need five to rotate from the bottom lane first, of course. Yep. Definitely stagger the CC against the Gangplank. But he just get the outer turret, so that is a consolation prize. It was actually the first tower of the game for FPX, so... And small mercies. 
But Gangplank, he's not snowballing and he's not getting as big as you may want to. He's on two and a half items right now and he needs significantly more if he wants to be as impactful as Ryze or even Orno Varus as they will be in this next fight. Yeah, he needs to hit probably two rotations of kegs to have a relevant amount of damage given the state of the game and how fed everybody is on the opposite side. There is a Zonia's there as well for Icon, so he's got some armor. There's armor boots for Chelly as well with his Ninja Tabi. Not a lot of easy targets to take apart here for a Gangplank. Not until that third item at least is complete. And frankly, it feels that FPX, they just need more time to be to be a team. They need more weeks in the LPL, need to grow. They've currently got like the perfect circle of wards as well. It, just, it looks funny on the map, it's actually a, a full circle. <laughs> There's that. It's about to get removed, though, if you talk about FPX. Yeah, I was. Yeah. About to go down. And again, we're contesting vision in the jungle. We're just seeing if we can get a pick, perhaps. Hey. Wow. Actually, from a void spike. All right. <laughs> but you know what is important is that whilst the vision is being cleared out, there is so much of it, they can't clear all of it. Oh, yeah. on a ward. There is actually that many wards that you'll need, like, two sweeper rotations to even consider getting it all. So they have ways to get closer to the Baron Pit, is the point. FBX, they're in this situation where they just have to wait for either a pick or maybe they can make a play around Baron, but the onus is not on them right now. Or well, it is, but the ball is definitely not in their court. Because OMG have starts off with Baron. Pepper? He knows it's being done. And it's at half health. It Now's is going the time, down very Pepper. quick. Try and make this happen. And Crisp, I don't know where he went, actually. Because I saw, I saw the ram come across and knock him up, and I didn't see him come back down. So, <laughs> absolutely demolished. Thing, I have to use the ultimate here. Knock away five and Chelly, and these wall off the, pa uh, the pass. And Pepper will also fall on the back. People are just getting picked off left and right. Yeah, they're trying to survive. Gimgoon is still pushing on the bottom side of the map. There's no teleport for him anymore, so it's just about getting what they can. And Gangplank is getting objectives. You know that the Baron's gonna go to OMG at this stage, and can Bing get out alive is the only other question that remains, and it looks to be the case. OMG, very much snowballed. I would have laughed had that the Gangplank ultimate taken the Baron, but not gonna be the case on this one, unfortunately. Gimgun gets another tower on the bot side, but that's essentially all that we have. Yeah, as everything will subside, OMG, they'll get that chance to go back, get some items, and, and reassess the current state of the map with the Baron buff in their back pockets. With this Baron buff and with the substantial gold leads that everybody has, except for Orn, because he's against the Gangplank. You're looking towards a push pretty much down the middle lane, establish the vision control, and probably go between mid and top. Mm -hmm. yeah, looking towards again, still the Gangplank. I mean, it's the same story. Broken record at this point, but we do have to look towards the Gangplank. Is he able to land that perfect barrel onto a carry in the backside? Because I'm not sure if Bing and LWX have really gotten to the point where they're hurting yet, because we've got two and a half items on LWX, but a significant amount of armor on the opposite side from OMG, so yeah. front to back, good luck. So that's the thing, right? Like, his items, they're strong. Pepper, he's desperate. The fact that Five is able to tank all of this damage and maybe even get out alive here, turns around, pops the Fissure, slows the entire team. They're now winning they're in a the 2v5. Bottleneck. Chelly and World Six now turn up to the fight. They take down Pepper. They brought up the tower. That's a little bit of Bastion there, but now everyone's getting knocked out. That's two kills, three kills, four kills. World Six demolishes the team. On Gimgun, yes, he gets one kill, but that was completely destroyed by World Six. I know it was desperate, but Jesus, Chelly in five pretty much just won a 2v5 against the entire roster of XPX. All they had to do was bring the rest of their team about, and FPX just got completely melted. The inhib's gone. You've got 15 to 10 seconds on the rest of the team. I think it's only one inhib this time around, but that's that's a recall. That's a reassessment. You know what? They're going to go for more. They're smart players. No, no, he took one with him. <laughs> We're going to the top side. Only two minions wanted a part of this. Yep. But that's absolutely insane. You're absolutely right, because Five, he tanked all of that damage from everybody. He got a heal out from Chelly, and Chelly just turned around and blasted them. Like he's not even ult as well. Yeah, he's not even like the most tanky or fed member, I should say, on that side. You look towards World 6 now and also Icon, but he just doesn't die. Can't kick him back to the team, Pepper. So it's just into the wall, but you're at Five. He's got the locket. He had the door up. Five-man ultimate from Braum, and Chelly's been hitting pretty much this entire time. And look at Chelly. He knows. He is feeling himself and goes forwards, does get into the middle, but unlike other AD carries that get thrown into the middle, he doesn't want to flash somewhere safe. He turns around, and he just starts shooting arrows at everybody that he sees, and he knows that his team's going to win that team fight regardless yeah. because of how much work he did alongside five.
It feels like we're a lot longer into this game, Rusty, but we're only 27 minutes just. It's just because we've had so many kills. 17 kills to OMG and scoreline very similar to game one, unfortunately. In game one, you definitely could have said maybe if these plays went the other way, then they could see a different game. But in the second game, I can say that OMG have just exploited. They know the blueprint. Yeah. They know the way to beat FPX. They do know the way. And they've just killed them every single time. More importantly, Pepper and Bing. They just could not make it happen in the mid lane duo. Here we, Here go, we go, once again. Just it's pressure. The ram on the backside. It's just pressure, they Tower just want low. the turrets. Power down, Kim Goon gets knocked up. This could be really bad. Has to flash away here. Chain of corruption onto LWX, and everyone has to get away from the corruption there. Oh my Ooh, god, that was Chris a one hit. Disappears. That, that was, was gross. Yeah, that was World 6 and Icon. Just tag teaming Janna. That was nuts. That actually is unfair, the amount of damage that Crisp just took. He has heal. No one expected that much damage that quickly. That's the second in him that's just going to be completely gone. And OMG, they're far enough ahead that unlike what WE did against Billy Billy, there's no response from FPX. They just have to deal with it. They tried their hardest to trade. Everyone got to about half health, but no chance, no dice, two in hips. Two in hips and looking towards the bot side now as well. What have we got next? It's a mountain dragon, so to add insult to injury, OMG will get another way to hit down these turrets, these towers, these objectives. And Gangplank is back to farming because that's essentially all he can do at this point in time is hope that he gets another item, becomes a bit stronger. He's working his way towards the infinity edge. Well, on the opposite side, you've got a full tank, Xiang. Bottom side, three, four items now. Mid lane, probably fill board. Actually working towards a sixth, so. Yeah. Icon able to very easily solo this dragon. Fully stacked on the Rod of Ages is always a big deal, also. And that last item could be a Ludens if he wants move speed, could be a Death Cap if he just wants to deal more damage. Honestly, I'm not sure he's going to be able to finish the item, so we'll never find out. Yeah, unfortunate. But there is an Infinity Edge done for Gimgoon, as you mentioned. He was getting closer ah. to it, but he's actually got it. And that means that the miracle relies solely on the man with the kegs. Yep. That is the only thing left for them, is he needs to crit their faces off, and he needs to do it within 30 seconds of them sieging. Once again, the zoning ramp goes right through the team, but there's enough to take down the tower. Gender Corruption misses. World 6 jumps in, but that's just get out of the back. Here comes the Gangplank Ultimate. They need to do something right now. The barrel's popped, but didn't hit anyone whatsoever. However, Azir's damage is starting to ramp up. They drop World 6 into his Guardian Angel. He'll jump away, get back to the shield and the sanctuary of his team. Five with a good fissure, but he may actually be the sacrificial lamb right here. As, as oh, the the oh, Pepper! Great ultimate into the wall there. We'll have to kill the uh, Orn as well. So FPX, successful defense. They do, however, lose their turret and are losing ground, but they have delayed the game. And this time, OMG are the ones that push up way too far. You've got the Guardian Angel gone from World 6 and two members gone, including the tanks. There were some kegs that crit some people in their pulse, and that is a big part of what makes the difference. And you're right, Azir has started to ramp up. There is some damage there. You're seeing some fight. There is some signs of life in the Fun Plus Phoenix roster. We always knew they were going to go down swinging. OMG kind of just let it happen, though. They pushed in way too hard. They did. They just needed to take the tower and pretty much back off at that point, but they literally World made, like, an wanted it. He really wanted it. Luckily, he had Guardian Angel, so he keeps his perfect KD alive. And I kind of, I guess he's just working his way towards his death cap at this point. World 6, you don't get a jungle. I want my six items. World 6 gets nothing. Not when Icon is 7-1 and wants something else. You just give it to him at that stage. Well, technically, World 6 has the better KDA, so... I feel like it should actually go to I mean, technically he doesn't it have was showing KDA. KDAs to challenge <laughs> over buffs right now and grumps. To be fair, his KDA doesn't exist because it's infinite. True. So well, it can still exist technically, it's infinite. Technically, Icon has the better KDA <laughs> because there is no percentage for World 6. Ah. That's, I'm not entirely sure that's how maps works, but <laughs> <laughs> I see the theory. Well, if it's kills plus assists right. divided by deaths, yep. Divide, dividing by zero right. doesn't exist. Okay, well, I could get into a mathematics discussion <laughs> here if I start bringing in my pure mathematics knowledge, but <laughs> I don't think anyone wants to hear that. want to hear about what's happening in League Maybe of Legends. Maybe I'm just triggering polls. Who knows? <laughs> um, but yeah, we're looking at this Baron now. And FPX, they have one final hope in this game, and that's to somehow wrestle the Baron from OMG and also win a fight at the same time. I don't think they really... You know what? Inhibitors are alive, so... 
With only the top lane in have gone, they have a chance to get here. OMG, instead of pushing them away, are just taking the fight. More so pushing the Baron to a low amount of health to force the fight. Coming in, nice double knock up onto the back line. That signals the chance for Orn to go in. Pepper gets obliterated there. LWX jumps away, he's got a lot of healing, but Chelly, he's on the back lines, and oh my god, he just went deep. Takes down the opposing enemy AD carry. Big knockout from the Tornado is a disengage, but the jungler's down, and pretty much no hope of stealing this Baron. Yeah, they wouldn't be able to steal the Baron. It requires something special from Bing. Gim Goon does have a lot of damage, and the thing is, OMG, they don't have a substantial amount of health, and for some reason, Xiang is zoning instead of tanking, so they made it harder than they had to. They do get the Baron, and now they're able to recall and set up as the minions push in. You go back to base, and indeed FPX have to do the same because there is a big double super minion wave in the top side, another minion wave amassing in the bottom, so that both has to be addressed. Oh yeah, Gangplank, if he was able to maybe get in there, then perhaps he lands the ultimate or the barrel of the century, but that was not the case. And we see that initiate again, initiated by Xia. The thing is, how does Chelly get as deep as Chelly gets is always the question. I feel like Bing's ulted him in in some variety, but he didn't. So Chelly, he just, he sees it. He's like, you know what? Uh, Take the Rise ultimate. Put me in the middle of the fight, team. I am the captain now. And he takes two of them out. The end gets a double, but that man's confident. That's actually hilarious. That's that mid-fight, Chelly was like, hey, Icon, you're going to have to toss me. He's like, you got it, buddy. <laughs> Pops the ultimate, <laughs> throws him into the back line. And he had the Guardian Angel as well, so no worries. Icon is the quarterback. Chelly is the ball. He is. Chelly's going to get another red buff. And 20 to 7 now. The fact that FPX are even surviving at this point is impressive. But OMG, this should be the final nail in the coffin. To be fair, it's an Azir and a Gangplank. It's frustrating to push into. It's very fair, hard fair. to actually take down structures against. So OMG are really reliant on having the Baron to end the game. So now is their chance to do exactly that. Because the one that time they didn't, they lost a fight. We could get into another uh, BLG WE situation if FPX continues stalling. But it's down on these inhibitors. Like they are able to stop these inhibitors from going down. Yep. Maybe these picks start scaling up. They have to win this fight. Yes, the next this fight is that the happens, one. and it has to be forced by FPX. They need to win immediately. And then we bring that into the equation for sure. You know, chipping away at these inhibitors, and it will go down because there's nothing really to help FPX on open ground here. Yeah, they so. go to top laners five, they should go to bottom laners five immediately after. Get the double super minion waves start to stack for OMG, and I feel like that's the last thing they need to achieve before the minions help them actually finish the game. Yeah. And all five members of OMG just corral those minions in. Pretty much just don't get hasty at this point because OMG have done 34 minutes of good work. Don't want to undo it with one poor team fight that allows FPX back into the game. So just poke away slowly. Xi'an can do whatever he wants to do because he's a big massive tank right now. You say things like that and I start to wonder, because OMG are the kind of team that may make those decisions. They are. They have been slower to ramp though in World 6. He's just chipping away at bot lane, so OMG do not Lee need Sin to push too hard. Here. That's why they have to respect, they have to back away. World 6 being bottom is good, for as long as the top lane doesn't die. Yeah, maybe even just keep this cannon minion alive. It's going to be targeted by Pepper and LWX plus Bing, but Bottom inhib also fell, so double supers are going to be spawning on next wave. Well, oh, actually, top is still alive, so it's going to be another wave after that. Yeah, I feel like now they're waiting for super minions to come into the middle lane. They don't have the threat anymore of pushing bottom while they're pushing top. They either need to force it, and Pepper currently has the deepest flank you've ever seen. I mean, currently, I don't think he's been actually seen he's by going OMG, for this so kick. this is a potential good fight here, and they're being zoned away by Gim Goon's ultimate. Comes down, kicked into the base, but the Zonia is active for Icon. He hasn't got the ultimate just yet. In comes the Ram, lands onto two. World 6 with the assassination onto Chris. The carries are still alive though, and looking towards the bottom of the fight. Gim Guna Pepper on the retreat. He flashes into the ultimate, the Ram Wolf. Icon, and unfortunately, Roots in the place could not follow up on the Q. And that's a clean 5 for 0, and OMG will take the Nexus turrets. OMG looking fantastic in this set against Fun Plus Phoenix. They get themselves the clean redemption victory pulse. Yes, they do. It's Two and zero to OMG as they finish off from Plus Phoenix. From a set one that felt a little bit awkward watching OMG, very disjointed performance when they played against Team WE, to bouncing back in a set like this where they just took apart Fun Plus Phoenix. That's a team that has a lot of potential behind them. They've looked yep. great. They took EDG to the absolute limits and they push everyone they play against. But they didn't push OMG. OMG pushed them. <laughs> yeah. Completely dismantling Fun Plus Phoenix. 
Good stuff from OMG. It's good to see them back, honestly. I'd like to say that this is their first game of the LPL because that puts them now at 1-1. One and one. First series was a 0-2, and, and now they are 2-0 and zero in that second series. So now evening up and making their climb back towards the top of the table. Absolutely, and a lot of it starts from the mid lane and jungle duo. Kudos to World 6. He didn't play as aggressively in the first game. He actually played the Sejuani and showed up to play coordinated super well with Icon. The coordination is something that is to be commended. The communication looks to be very good. They're able to translate that into the second game with momentum, going top lane together, and then bringing Xiang into it, making a trio. The experienced trio comes together and puts in serious work. I just feel like when OMG are actually playing on form, every single part of their roster works. Like, it's not just the jungle mid. The top lane, Chiang, he's always a stable rock of the team. And the bottom lane, when multiple bands went towards five as well, didn't even matter. He just bust out Leona and made plays himself anyway. Yep. So there's always going to be strong power points on that team. And now with the addition of Chelly, we have to see how he levels up because I've never looked at Chelly and been like, man, this guy is like going off. I think the biggest play I saw from him in this game was actually when he just took the Rise Ultimate into the back line and just started going at them. So I want to see more of that from him because that's how he, I think, adapts to grow in this team from OMG. And you know, Rez does say that Chelly's very similar to SMLZ as a player and I can see a lot of that similarity. Yeah. Playing in OMG as an AD carry, you have to understand that you're stuck in just the 2v2. It's very unlikely that Jungler will come down and intervene at all. You just have to be strong laners and between Five and Chelly, they absolutely were. And then you get to team fights, and he actually says, toss me in, boss, and just goes into the middle of a team fight and looks for pentakills. That is pretty much SMLZ in a nutshell, but it's now Chelly. Yep, yes it is. So he is integrating into that team, and it was a good game. Honestly, there was a small dip where FPX were able to win like a fight, but for the most part, it was a, essentially a very clean game from OMG, and a clean series, in fact. I just really enjoy the diversity from them. You know, you saw some fight from FPX. We saw some changes in both carries and tanks being played, but firstly, you have Xiang play Gangplank, win the matchup. Now you have Xiang play Orn and just outright win the whole series because of the team helping him, but he's gone from a carry to a tank. The jungle roll's gone from a tank to a carry. Mid lane's gone from two different characters and played them both exceptionally well in very different ways. And, sure. and that's the cool thing about watching OMG through that set. Only in two games so far, but almost opposite styles from the three top side members of the team. Yeah, on the opposite side, this time FPX weren't able to really find those early game advantages against a team like OMG. And to be fair, this is the first time we're seeing them go up against a team who almost always get advantages themselves. So it's just like when two objects hit each other, what happens? And unfortunately, we weren't able to get that and snowball, which is usually the way that we see FPX really get those advantages. But that's our thoughts. We are now going to send it over to the analyst desk to break down the series. Thank you very much, Pulse and Rusty, for, you know, casting those last two games. It was a great match there between Fun Plus Phoenix as well as OMG. OMG came out ahead, and I know, Raz, you are dying to talk about this new man, Chelly, who's replaced SMLZ. Oh, 100%. Just because I think Pulse said it well in terms of just finding his new place on OMG. Uh, one real special moment for me, of course, was just seeing how, like, just after the game, uh, Chelly... Now, having a deeper handshake with Gimgoon just because they were just last split on the same team in game talent in the LSPL. So just like, there's a bit of brother brothership there, but Chelly kind of made a stake in this game. You saw moments of which he can actually become a mainstay player for the team, and just a little bit of it, but I thought for this game, at the game three, it was mostly just, of course, the Kha'Zix, World 6, and Icon. Yeah, that was pretty dope from World 6. I feel about like uh, OMG's composition was really set up all for that bot lane dive. They picked up the Braum for yes. that, they had the Varus, they had the Orn. So there was multiple knockups, multiple stuns, and they also had Rise with Minion Dematerializer in the mid lane that could facilitate that level 6 roam. However, for everything to make that happen, they needed World 6 to make those early picks in the mid lane especially. And he's the man that takes man of the match for game number 2 against Fun Plus Phoenix, and rightfully so. Yeah, the entire game there, World 6 was just kind of taking advantage of the lacking vision coming out of Fun Plus Phoenix. There was one gank at the top side of the map, Rusty called it well, he just found himself completely behind Tristana. I was like, wait a second, how did he get behind me? How would that even a thing? Just get past th three bushes just because you have levels, uh, you evolved your ulti first, and you, you know what? Bushes just kind of cloak you. Well, there was a point in the match where time literally stopped for quite a few of these players where they took a dive in the bottom lane. OMG were able to pick up a substantial lead from that one play. We're going to take a look at that. Gentlemen, as it rolls, well, when it does roll, please break it down for us. But that was really the key point in the match where the game was broken wide open for OMG. Yeah, a lot of it came down to the fact that there were two 
or at least two flanks that initially came in. One thing was Kha'Zix as we were looking to the dive. This was initially good from from Punch Phoenix. They thought they could take a few kills off of it. These are in the uh, stopwatches started to come through. Icon came in his flank, and this is where it became important because we already talked about two flanks. The first flank already came through. The second flank was Icon. It ended up working well for Pun Plus at the end, but then a large advantage was already created by OMG. This was that second play where Fun Plus Phoenix tried to save the game, but Chelly and Five turned it around and got the rest of the team in the back. Yeah, line. at this point, OMG was already really far ahead. Five managed to survive that somehow, gets the five man knockoff, and just look at all the crowd control coming in into the FPX composition. Even a great flank from Icon, who at this point was already extremely fed, and that's just a clean ace for them. Of course, Kha'Zix and Ryze by that point in time were like combined 14 kills. It was surprised, or at least to me, that the game didn't end anytime sooner yeah. because Icon was completely fed early on in the game and he moved up to the top side of the map already getting a just kind of a, I guess, split push going for the team. And that was really difficult for Fun Plus to be able to kind of break that. They ended up just kind of being able to stall it out. That's where the team fight started to come through. Good on them, but OMG turned out to be better than they had. And I know before we went into that match, Clement, you were talking a bit about the team composition, not only for OMG, but also how you felt like Fun Plus Phoenix's team composition just kind of didn't gel together right from pick down. I actually felt like most of their picks was good, except for the gangplank pick. I was a bit hesitant there. I felt like they could have just went for a standard tank because it's very obvious that the enemy team is setting up for that teleport down. Yeah. And Kingplank doesn't want to teleport. He just wants to stay up there and farm it out with people. And once you see both of the top laners teleport in the bottom in the replay we just ran, we could see the difference. Gangplank really didn't do much there, but Orn was able to get multiple knocks up knockups on the uh, on the call of the Forge God, and that really set the tone. Even though FPS got more kills in that bot lane, they were still very set very far behind in terms of the map pressure. Mm -hmm. On top of that, we saw the very early dive onto Gangplank on the top side of the map. Not only was Wild Six there, Seung was already on top. Yes. The top lane. We saw Icon roaming out. Is this the synergy that we saw, you know, from 2016, 2017 OMG transferring over to 2018 as well? Yeah, this is what we were kind of hyped about initially when World 6 came onto the team, just because it felt like Icon and World 6 worked really well together. And this is kind of calling back to that. The fact that they were on that game plan so early on, move it to the top lane, you're not going to get away from that three man gank at that early into the game. Uh, well, that's all from us here at the Analyst for game number two. We're going to go into a very short break. We'll be interviewing one of the players from OMG right after this. Welcome to the interview desk right here. We, I'm Mike Clement Chu, and right with me right now is the victorious Icon from the mid lane. Icon, can you give us a hand? Hello, everyone. I'm OMG's Icon. All right, so my first question for you is, I actually think you played phenomenal that game, and I actually felt you were the MVP of that game, but World 6 took it away from you. Do you have anything to say for yourself? Uh, so I actually don't need to do translations there. <laughs> so Icon said that, well, I felt like that game, I was for sure the MVP, but World 6 took that away from me. It's okay, it's only the first game, so I will let that slide. 
Uh, on that note, I want to ask, uh, I felt like you were the MVP because you really controlled the tempo mid-game, and a lot of our casters pointed out you were bringing minion dematerializers to roam earlier uh, in the game. Can you tell us as viewers how to use minion dematerializer effectively? Uh,一般那个小兵趋势器的话,就用在炮车上面,就是 如果对面没有小兵趋势器,如果你用在炮车上面,那一波兵是肯定可以推过去的。so when you have minion dematerializer and your enemy doesn't, then you can always use it on the cannon minion wave, and that way you should always be able to get a push in that single wave. And my final question for you is, uh, we're moving into 2018, congratulations on your first win. We know you have a new lineup with Chelly here. What can we expect from this new 2018 OMG lineup? Uh,我觉得就是我们加入了新人就有就是 so with our new players, we felt we feel like they are going to bring more passion to the game. We are going to continue to improve and continue to change. And that's all for you folks out there. Thank you very much for your time, Icon, and you made my job incredibly easy. Stay tuned. We still have the game between Snake and EDG coming up.那么想问一下你为什么这次中国队能气氛是怎么样的
，哎，救命！啊！救一个，救一个，救一个，救一个！哇！救一个，救一个，救一个！杀不了！杀！拆了吧，拆了吧，拆了吧，拆了吧！比赛上默契就会更好了。每个人都不要再想上一把四了，我们想一下明天环球怎么玩就行。别别别，我想要再多打两把，好吧？我们再多打几盘。你怎么就嗨起来了？肯定要嗨啊，不嗨怎么打比赛？可以。韩国队打赛前不嗨，你还赛赛中嗨？对啊，再说就被他们打了，嗨不起来了呀。我们吵架，吵架，他们嗨，他们嗨，他们嗨。吵架，我再帮你打，我再帮你打。打一下这个，这波打，这波打，这波打。哇！左一，左一，左一，左一，左一，能秒吗？能秒，能秒，慢点，慢点，慢点，冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！冲！能能守了，能守，能守，能守，太没了，一波，一波。哎，我们输了，他们以为我们赢了。听一下，听一下，这么多人来替你们加油打气呢，自己不要先意志消沉。你看台下的观众替你们加油打气，并不是一定要你们赢。你看台下的观众替你们加油打气，并不是一定要你们赢。他们是希望你们能够放松心情去打。懂吗？所以你们就要对得起他们，就是放松心去打。我一样是二比二，凭什么对面能笑，我们笑不了？哎，不让了，不让杀一把他们。是啊，轻松点，轻松一下，干一下，干一下。我拆架，拆架。金毛可以去。我死了。来死来死来死。不会死不会死，他让他，他让他让你，你这个位置，这位置可以。杀黄杀黄杀黄杀黄杀黄，杀黄一次血杀黄，杀黄一个一个能一能杀杀能一能。来死了！来死了！金毛金毛金毛金毛金毛金毛金毛金毛金毛金毛金毛金毛金毛金毛一波一波一波一波，难受！难受一波，下路一波，下路一波，我去下路一波，下一波，下一波，下路一波，难受！可以，那下一个结束，结束，结束！来来来来来，哇！又被送了，他们都送了，完美！来来来，我们现在可以可以可以，冠军，冠军，冠军，冠军！推别理他，推我顶他，兄弟 ，nice， 难受，打得好累啊！上盘那个阵容呢？上盘那个阵容逆风军能力还可以，对。二连起来，布隆过来保护。现在的这里打的有点凶了，可战有大招的，这边要注意船长的大。哇，又来一个左边，左边躲掉了。哇，漂亮，结合两边都有信息，但是这个时候已经没有战斗力了呀。布隆怎么办？杰克拉维秀起来了。在侧面被船长粘住，这边打起来，从第一步、第一步、第一波进场的王子，王子扛不住，直接被收。船长收回来自己的辅助，辅助在盯住，还想撤退，但船长大招把他们粘得动弹不得。侧面狼行一直想进场，但一直在被不同的人阻隔。对他一直想去抓这个残血的瑞兹，但是船长很危险，打出一个三环。哇，弗劳雷斯这边标示一下，但是在在这个地方很尴尬。哎，还好沙子在旁边，踢到了，把他救炸了，踢到墙上，打一套输出，秒秒没用，船长一个 Q 应该可以终结他。哦，漂亮！这把吸血鬼不给就算了，这一把这个也不给。哇，直接开大了，两边都是直接开大，骗了一个毛秒表。对，秒表打出来，但是这边自己在伤，打得过吗？打出了护盾，而且这边远射兵也在输出，哎 ，Q 了一下人，被 Q 死，减速给出来了，怎么说？闪现一 Q， 这不要打了呀！这骑在脸上的还不打，给个大招，很完美。先冲一下，冲起来两个，吸血鬼进场了，一闪下来，恩被秒，但是这里维鲁斯瞬间化为灰烬，真的是摧枯拉朽。还有一个猪妹，猪妹的话是往后拉了，又是一个一闪，双 C 阵亡加打野，还留在这里。大招好了，墨鱼也被踢死。